Hey everyone, welcome to our three minute cram session on operons or gene regulation in prokaryotes. There's two main types of operons that we're gonna talk about today. Inducible, like the LAC operon, and repressible, like the TRIP operon. Inducible operons are basically ones that you can turn on and repressible operons are groups of genes that you can turn off. And when we say turned on and off, what we mean is transcription or the action of RNA polymerase transcribing genes or sections of DNA into mRNA that will later be translated into proteins. Let's start with inducible operons or something like the LAC operon. In its usual state, we do not have transcription happening. That's mostly because we have a repressor here that's bound to a section called the operator in this operon. Now the purpose of these genes, LAC-Z, LAC-Y, and LAC-A, is to provide instructions for the cell to build parts of proteins to digest lactose. If there's no lactose in the cell, these genes don't need to be turned on because we don't need any enzyme to digest lactose. But when lactose does show up, a version of it, allolactose, can bind to the repressor, removing it from the operator. This allows RNA polymerase to move down the operon and transcription can occur. Once transcription occurs, we have the LAC mRNA, which can then later be transcribed into a protein that can digest the lactose. Once that lactose is all gone, it no longer binds to the repressor, which means it's back on the operator and we cannot have transcription any longer. So let's apply this. Let's say there's a mutation in the gene that codes for our repressor protein. Remember, the repressor is a protein itself as well. And in that mutation, allolactose can no longer bind to the repressor. What happens to our transcription? Well, if allolactose can't bind to the repressor anymore, that means the repressor stays on the operator because the repressor will not be removed unless allolactose binds to it. When allolactose can no longer bind to the repressor and the repressor stays on the operator, RNA polymerase can no longer move down the operon and transcribe the genes to generate these proteins. So we have low or no levels of transcription. If you're studying for AP Biology, you will not need to draw out all of the parts of this operon, but you may be given a model where this operon is illustrated similarly to what you see here and be asked questions like these. Let's take a brief look at a repressible operon. Remember, the TRIP operon is not listed explicitly in the AP Biology curriculum, but you might be introduced to it in a question. This is a type of operon that's going to keep transcribing or keep producing a product until it's turned off. So in its usual state, it is transcribing and creating these proteins which will generate tryptophan, something the cell needs. But if tryptophan is present in the cell, we don't need to build proteins to make that tryptophan itself. So tryptophan will bind to repressor, bind to the operator, and then prevent RNA polymerase from transcribing the rest of these genes. Remember, operons are a type of gene regulation in prokaryotic organisms, and these groups or genes are transcribed as a single mRNA molecule, and we can have both inducible operons, ones we can turn on by removing repressors, and repressible operons, ones that we can turn off by adding repressors. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.